Well, welcome back to Slice and Dice. This is a normal normal day, normal run. Classic hard, anyone? Gotta make sure I'm on the right. I am. Let's run it. Uh, I have not seen this. This is basic, but reversed. Sab. Let's do it. I'm down. Uh, yeah, hope you're doing well. Good morning, everybody. I am, you know, as it is actually morning when I'm recording this. I woke up early. Not really sure why, but here I am. 11 a.m. I know what the hell. I like 11 to 20 ad courts is fine. They're not very threatening. And it makes the early game free. I'm down with that. I think ad goblin is also pretty fine though. But this is good. I think the G probably means it's generated. But yeah. I'm in for this. I've been seeing a lot of metalware heat. Many people saying metalware bad, metalware good. I don't know. You can look at it however you like, basically, is my final stance. I'm not gonna spend the rest of my life talking about this character. I think they're good. If you don't like them, that's fine. I won't uh, begrudge you for that. This is just a normal run. It's just strange. <laughs> it's just it's just a little odd. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna blind pig ninja. That seems bad. I have to say. It does not sound like a banger. Uh... Yeah, my my feeling is that the random parties, the different parties like this one, are fun, but they definitely hurt you a little bit in your chances to win. So, I don't know. I'm still going to play them. It's fun. But I think that some parties can have a little trouble in some places. Uh, like if you get a super defensive party, suddenly certain fights feel... Uh, very hard. I'm gonna random bone charm. Cool. And yeah, I do like the greens as well. I know uh, they probably feel a little weaker in power level, but I think they're probably about the same. It kind of depends. Like, you have to know. I, like, basically, my true feelings about this game right now are that it's way, way too early for anyone to be making any hardline judgments. Uh, I'm going to try to spend a little time taking new curses and things like that so we can really get into the learning. Because it's going to be good to try out some curses that I think are bad but may not be. Because, you know. The problem is that uh, a lot of times what will happen is you can have a good run with a bad curse and then go, oh, that's not so bad. So you have to be aware of the fact that they may be tricking you. Hmm, this isn't lethal. I should lock that one, though. Yeah, you, you just gotta be aware that the curses might be tricking you, and you might have a specific team that beats it or whatever. I am not adding a bandit to Bramble. Are you out of your mind? Uh, I like Druid over Trapper. I'm, I know, uh, I've seen a lot of Trapper discourse as well. I've seen people saying they think Trapper is a lot better. I think Trapper is, like, exactly the same. I don't think there's anything different about Trapper uh, at this point. The character is like... Hold on. I can go balance. Wait, sorry, no. Slay is three. I was thinking Slay was Hex for some reason. But yeah, Trapper was before and is now exactly three sides, and I care very little about anything else on Trapper. Like, I don't want really to roll dodge, I didn't really want to roll shield. I want Trapper to roll me the one damage vulnerable and that's about it clumsy hammer faint halo i'm good for faint halo sadly you don't get credit if your spell saves someone but it's still fine three two i just i feel like metal really lets you blaze through some of these fights yeah i'm okay with this it's like sometimes you low roll, low roll and make bones, but I don't know. It doesn't really matter, does it? I don't think so, anyway. You just go, like, slay. He lives at one, I guess. I should have rolled the druid. But this is the fight that is one. So at that point, to me, it's like, why bother undoing everything? It's going to take too long, which is maybe a mistake. I have been kind of liking Sinew a little more, but I also really like Rogue. We just, we want to make sure that we pick things somewhere along the line that'll help me kill courts. 
I don't really know what helps me kill quartz though. It's like five damage. Yeah, okay, good idea. Let me just get five damage. Um, Militia, I don't care about on this turn. Militia hits fours, which isn't really a threat until turn two. So, you're on four, you're on five, you're on five. I'm gonna call the mana in and we'll go. Because all that really matters to me here is killing off these snakes. If I get no poison here, I'll be fine. Like, sure, this looks bad, but even even with this, I have so much time to catch up to these bones. And it's, you know, you can dodge here, buddy. It's really ooh, scary. Not that threatening. You can dodge. And then it just goes like, what, slay? Mm-hmm. I think that the only thing Medlar can really do to you is kill you in the second combat. I think two and three are the ones where you can die. This, like, from this point on, I should have the cap- my run should have the capability to kill that many bones. And in the first fight, there's, like, almost no threat. So, I could probably deal with three bones there anyway. Duvet, incense, uh... I could go duvet. Maybe I get an exert character and then it's fine. Uh, maybe I find myself in a position where I don't use what none of these care. I mean, maybe it's fighter. Maybe fighter goes shield, 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 and then I go, ah, well, cool. Probably not, though. Yeah, go ahead, buddy. I don't care. And nice. This will be good because I can just kill the slate with slay. Makes my life a lot easier. I think you could poison the bones here if you want. I feel like you want to poison the Slimer, but I have a strong feeling. Uh, so, so if you're newer, maybe you haven't heard me talk about this concept yet. I, I always worry that I'm going to spend too much time retreading old ground and then people are going to go, oh, this is all he ever talks about. Uh, but I'll talk about it here. There's something important that you have to know about this game, which is you have to understand when a fight is won. So like from this position, every turn that happens after this turn basically doesn't matter because this fight is already completely in my control. It would take a very shocking uh, setup, right? Some, something very out of the norm would have to happen to have me not win on this turn. So you kind of just stop thinking about it at that point is my feeling. Like you don't have to worry about the turn anymore. Brute is fine. So like in this fight, there will come a point in time where the fight is won, and the fight will be won when I am sure I'm going to kill the bell without taking any losses. Uh, which is, you know, it takes a little bit to get there in this fight because the fanatic is actually pretty scary. But I set him up to die next turn and then I'll be alright. Gong. Yeah, with this change where he does 3 damage exert, suddenly this guy's a little more frightening. But Druid can do this shield, and that'll give me... This will save two. Brute can stun the bell, which is actually pretty good. I, I'm pretty sure this is fine. And then we go, like... Here. Brute's on eight, so I go burst. Stun. You're done. I want to do this, actually, because it's better. So on the concept, right, in this position, it's better to just kill the imp because the bell is guaranteed dead on the next turn. You stun him and he's going to uh, 2 HP. If I don't roll 2 damage next turn, it's crazy, but not rolling 4 damage is possible. So you don't need to overkill the bell there. Oh, actually, he's just going to flee even. Glass blade, chain mail. Conventionally, I feel like you just always click on glass blade. Like, that's what I used to do. Chainmail is pretty good too, but I think Glassblade is just like... Having a 5 damage side is very good. And it lets you play Roulette better. It lets you maybe put it on Barbarian, though sometimes Barbarian just wants to die anyway. I'll go for the Cantrip. In this fight you roll for Cantrips. But anyway, that concept of fights being decided at a certain point is why I play... Uh, oh yeah, I can just Slay Slay. Ha. Huh. Like you want to play very aggressively for your first turn so that you are winning as fast as possible, pretty much. That's my stance, currently. Uh, Fiend Druid is kind of awkward, but I, as characters get better, I think Maiko gets worse. So, I don't know. <laughs> 
So these two illusions would not attack me. Yeah, you can see they don't actually have a target. Oh, that's super cool. They don't actually have a target because the carrier is killing them before they get to go. So Druid can go shield on Brute, and that'll save both of them, which is nice. Warden can roll for two damage. That's fine, too. But we're going to go burn, shield. Actually, you should go shield, burn. Can I stop this guy from poisoning me? I can. It's good, because I'm going well on health. Like this, So from this spot, I wouldn't call this fight one, because there is a chance that if I roll poorly uh, and they get a little poison on me, I could drop a character here, but it's mostly one. And also, uh, if Fiend dies, we don't care. Of course. But I'm kind of just spreading damage to let the poison do its work. Yeah, and then from this position, it is like legitimately one, because I can't lose. You, you win ties if you don't know that. Idol for a fanatic. Now, this is where the game starts getting hard because we're fighting courts now. Two to four is Glass Blade, Faint Halo, Duvet. A Shining Bow is probably better. I think having ranged. So my big feeling about Shining Bow is that this lets you play... Uh, what, what do I want here? I want... It's fine. Actually, I want... No, 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 that's fine. The big feeling about Shining Bow is that if you get triple Shuriken later, it makes it almost... Like, it makes it automatic that you hit every chain you want, which is very good. Now we just have to proc intangible here. I think the ghosts are about the same in terms of how threatening they are now. You just make sure you proc your intangible right away and you'll be fine. Could go burn balance, kill a sniper. It also procs intangible. So ranged kills the other sniper. Shield here. Stun this one. Because I don't care about single use from this point because I will win next turn. So we stun the, the weekend to make it more likely that I win on this turn. Yeah, I'm down to let the fiend start dying. I've been kind of keeping him alive, but there's no real reason to. Although, I guess he can live here since he rolled well enough. Alright, buddy. Ooh, Captain Babalist. Captain has formation, if you haven't seen this, which is three for three damage and three shield. He does two to all enemies and shield two to all allies. Uh, it's okay, I think. This is Cleave Chain. Which is also not that good. I think you go Dabalist, but losing Rogue is a little sad. Dabalist doesn't bring a ton, but Dabalist is good early. Just kind of falls off if your blue isn't your big plan. Now, Rotten. I think this boss got really scary. I think this guy is like actually pretty frightening now a little worse though because of the courts to be fair uh, but i do not i do feel like he's still kind of frightening i do not love him oh uh, we should burn last i'm killing the courts here for sure can you get no you can't get a save that's okay. Getting the save effect on Warden would have been nice, too. Oh, you can get a save, actually. That's good. Because, you know, you get the self-save counts on Faint Halo. Okay. We're equalized with the curse right off the jump, which is okay. But, I don't know, it's kind of scary. I don't have big damage to race Rotten down. And it's very hard to outvalue this boss. He's 23 HP now. Oof. The big thing here is to make sure we kill off all the bones ASAP. Because they're most of the actual damage we're taking. Uh, two, three. I'm okay with it. I'm gonna save the one mana. I think it's worth it. Because this makes it so that if I roll a two, I can balance on this turn. But. I probably want to roll for cleanse here. You're on five. You're on technically 11 here. Wow, this is not looking good for you, Druid. I'm looking for mana, actually. Maybe you should settle there. I think my Druid just went XXX on me, which is a little bit BM to Warden. He's been doing God's work keeping your ass alive, and this is what you do to him? That's fucked up, Druid. 
Yeah, yeah, now you kill him. That's fucked up, Druid. That, like, that's... That's really gross. Add pair to all heal self-heal sides. Uh, this can be good if I get a... It, this is like, you're kind of calling your shots. I don't like it too much. Cantrip is also kind of whatever, though. So, you're calling your shot either way here. But I'm going to pick the cantrip because I have... At least Dabalist makes use of it now. Like, I know that. But if I end up not on, like, Doctor or Prophet or Surgeon, I'm going to be real sad I took that wedding ring. We don't play heavy anymore. Um, it's a little bit awkward, but we can go kill Quartz. It's a shame that neither of these gnolls are uh, exerting. That's my only real thought here. But I think this is good enough because we proc the intangible. We keep everyone alive so we get another full round here. Yeah, I doubt this is bad. Although the imp coming out swinging is tough. Cantrip heal looks good. I could take two mana, because this fight might not be one after this turn, so having another uh, another turn of Fiend is good to have. You can take this. Okay, what do we get here? We get eight. You're dying here, you're dying here. You're also dying, I think you're too poisoned, yeah. I'd have to go balance balance to save Brute at the very least. I don't hate it. It's kind of a waste though, don't you think? This is the sort of situation where you have to really assess what you're looking at here. I think if you go balance balance and save Brute, you're putting yourself pretty far behind. Because instead of that, I can kill a ghost, kill the imp. Wait, this is like the same. Oh yeah, okay, never mind. It's like the same. Because you're ending up killing the ghost and the imp anyway. You just end up with like two less mana in this line, but who cares about that? Maybe my druid rolls a cleanse and saves Brute's life here. Wouldn't that be nice? Ooh, good heal. This cantrip heal is actually doing a lot of good work. I could do this actually, because this fight is going to take a while longer than I expected it looks like. So we may as well play the long game. Heal Brute. Shield Fiend. What are you dying to? Oh, you're just getting fucking smoked. They're rolling you up and smoking you. I think I just killed the null. Although, I could burst, burst, burst here. You can kill the null. You can hit three on the demon. Burst, burst, burst is also okay. Yeah, because I think it's better. This Knoll isn't hitting me next turn, and this fight is still not completely won. They still threaten me. So, it's good to play safe. Well, safer. There's only so much you can do for safety in this fight. Three, two, four. Now we have it in our control. Now it's all me. But you gotta, you gotta piece that fight together. You gotta recognize that you haven't won yet. And then, you know, play safe. Uh, I did say Dabalus is only good if you have a good blue, and Weaver is a good blue. I think Prince is pretty bad, but it'd be cool to get him to work one day. This team does not play him, though. Like, definitely does not play him. You think? it's It just has no HP penalty. There's no thinking. It's fine. I don't know. I mean, mostly with Prince, my biggest problem is that I don't want my tier 3 to have sides that look like gamblers. And, uh, well, you know. I have sides that look like gamblers, so I'm kind of not into it. I'm good with... Actually, I'm good with crushing here and setting him down a little lower. Yeah. The... The look is fine. Weaver makes... Uh, this curse a lot easier because he's going to crush very often and crush plus two is not too hard to hit. And sometimes you do this too, which is nice too. Hey. Ag, he says. Bloodlust is good here because we can go bloodlust mana. Ideally bloodlust mana on druid later, but or not on druid, but on like whoever replaces druid. Never for sure. 
so yeah, I don't think it's Demon Claw. We go Bloodlust Mana, especially in this fight. Chomp. At least we have high health on our top and bottom, so Chomp's not so bad. Three, six, five. Five kills the Quartz, which is good. Probably don't press reroll. We lock our four. X three. Okay. Uh. I need to save my druid because I don't want to lose glass blade. Alright, druid save. That wasn't too hard. And in this spot, you just want to end on three mana. With Weaver, you want to make sure you're banking as much mana as you can to roll charge mana and go big time. I'm rolling big time here. I've been very lucky with these charge mana rolls, I have to say. I cannot complain. I mean, I can complain about anything, you know. You already know I can complain if I want, but I'm not going to complain. We'll just crush both of those guys, and then we're full on top and bottom for Chomp, so he doesn't really have much play here. The Cantrip Heal has been a lot nicer than I expected. It's been kind of doing a lot of good work. Stoic Veteran. I don't know, I'm not a big Stoic fan. He kind of just doesn't do anything, I feel like. He... He's, he's new granite, uh, and I get that, but I don't know. It just feels really bad to click Veteran Davalist, but I'm not taking a random here, so I guess I'll take Veteran. You can click on Stoic there if you like. He does actually use the cantrip pretty well. In fact, I'm going to cantrip Veteran even. Like, he uses the cantrip all right, but I don't know. It just doesn't seem very good to me. Oh, hey, Weaver on top so he can dodge Tarantus. Man. I'm so good. What the hell? That doesn't seem right. Uh, yeah, sure. I don't know, Tarantus when he's alone is not very scary. Sometimes he does, I guess, this. But, I mean, what can I say? Oh, this is actually plus one. Wow, really? That's plus one? Shouldn't you be in the negatives? Oh no, because he's actually just set to zero here. Huh. What do you know? Then we cleanse, and then we burst. And then next turn he dies, or, sh or dodges, one of the two. He has Bone Charm on, so it's not a big deal either way. I believe in you, Weaver. I bet you got this dodge. Oh, he's got the dodge. Mostly it's just nice to let Tarantus know that he never stood a fucking chance versus me. Now, if I had clicked on Prince, I would be much happier to see Fairy Dust. As it sits, Fairy Dust, not very good. Bullseye, though. Engage to the middle side. I mean, Engage Veteran is okay. You hit threes and eight, or sixes and eights. It's decent. Uh, it's a question of what I'm going to be playing in the long term, though. I think that Fairy Dust isn't very good anymore because most of the X's on the tier 3's are gone. We'll see if I'm wrong. But without an item that gives you X's, I kind of think it's not that good. And instead I'd rather just take this N-Gage play. Ooh. I'll be okay if I roll. Yeah, even if I rolled something like heal and then one shield here, I think I can always save my druid. Because he can go balance in the four in the big shield, which is fine. I was hoping to roll something better off of veteran, but yeah. what can I say? We sure do just have a lot of uh, health, huh? Like, I'm two full rounds of damage. Nobody is even dying yet. Good to see. We go bounce. Actually, you could go crush here. This could be crush, crush. That's lethal. I almost missed that. Reroll Warden? Nah. I mean, you could if you like. Fate plus Weaver? You know the deal. You know how we get down in here. Fate plus Weaver. It's a good combo. Because Fate is always going to give you two. Now, 
just a quick thought here. Let me let me take this up with my associates real quick. One, two, three, four, five, so of the characters that have mana gain, four of them actually benefit from wedding rings. So you know what? I bet you can just click on wedding rings because wedding rings, well, I thought it would just be, well, what if I miss? Who am I going to miss? How, like, how am I going to miss? That's the question. And the answer is, I don't really think you can. It's, uh, you know what? You can make patient value happen here. I don't really think you can miss because... It's half of the cast. Now, Pear isn't like anything crazy. Don't get it twisted. It's just pretty cool. This is eight damage. You'll, I can't really roll you though, cause you'll die sometimes. I guess I can lock it. Five mana. Cause you can lock shield, heal shield, kill chomp I think is good. Crush, strand, strand. Two damage. Are you dying to... Oh, you know what? We go crush, kill demon. Burst. Kill spiker maybe is better. I guess it actually doesn't matter. They're doing the same thing. I didn't realize. I thought he was doing a big punch. Uh, this will be fun. I would be shocked if the spiker killed anyone. And worst case, he would kill one target. Done. Handled. Angel Feather, second heart. I don't know who my gray is, so Angel Feather is a bit of a big call. Second heart is just always very good. I think I will take my fate to 16, thank you. This fight doesn't look that scary, but again, I just have to point out we are so tanky. It's like absurd. Okay, now we start settling. Mm -hmm. What do you wanna what do you wanna kill here? Kill this golem. I think I'm gonna play Crush Burst for you. Just to deal with the weaken. And I think I wanna kill the zombie. So that I don't take poison. This feels fine. I'm maybe I'm disrespecting the golems. I just really think that for an endgame enemy, they don't really do anything for how late we see them. Like in this fight, I can fairly reasonably disrespect them, I believe. Eight mana. Like their big side, you can just stop them doing anything with. Uh, by just hitting them, and then suddenly their max damage, if you're playing it out correctly, is like a 5, which is not much. And sometimes they just roll 2s? I don't know. This is much less threatening than something like a Fnatic. Oh, I was supposed to Bloodlust Fate, by the way. Sorry, I forgot about that. I forgot the whole point. I was going to Bloodlust Fate. Let me get here. Hold on. First crush, crush. Hang on. Now you gotta give me a sec. This one looks like it has a little bit of a... This one looks like it has a tactic here. I think there's a secret hidden lethal that we can find. We burst, no, no, no. We burst, crush, crush. Yeah, there it is. That was a fun one. Oh, the corpse doesn't even spawn in on inevitable. That's interesting. Could have had Angel Feather Valkyrie. That's okay though. I did lose a run to inevitable last night. Uh, I killed him really fast, but all of the wisps had spawned bones, and I didn't pay attention to that. And then I just got mobbed by the bones. It was like, a f I killed him, and there was just a full screen of bones, and I got crushed. So, we gotta give him a little respect. 
This guy, I think he is going to actually be a real pain since I'm winning through mana gain and he just goes intangible. I could probably go... It's... You want cleanse in this fight. So is there a gray I can roll that has cleanse? No. Uh, I could roll paladin. I'll go for it. Oh, it fine. Now we're supposed to do ogre blood fate and this shield here. This fight is gonna be a real pain. I should probably take the cantrip off, actually. Because I don't want to cantrip and then exert. Although Duvet actually kind of goes off in this fight then. We can move second heart. It's good to localize all your health so that he focuses one target. If fate gets exerted, I can come back with a Duvet X2 Bloodlust play, which is sweet. And you should lose one of your cantrips, actually. Okay. Let's get into business here. So my feeling is that off the jump, you want to kill as many of these wisps as possible before you start getting slowed. Ooh, that dodge is pretty good. No way to... I should probably kill the quartz here. Actually, we can go crush, burst, quartz, kill, wisp, kill, wisp. Once it's just you and inevitable, as long as you've done it in a short amount of time, I think you'll crush this fight. So we just want to race him down to that point. Uh, my dabblest is find a roll. Just don't leave it the only thing I roll. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Okay, well, I'm on vacation this turn. Oh, it's okay. Actually, Fate, you should just not play. You can roll X's. You're allowed. Because you have Duvet. So now we proc a little Bloodlust. We hit that side. We go off. Come on, Fate. This is Inflict Exert, bottom half. You're on negative three. Okay. Uh, we didn't hit the Bloodlust, sadly. Very disappointed. You kill this wisp. They go to eight, if you ever need to do the mental math quickly. I think I leave these guys. I want to start procking intangible. So I'm going to leave these alive. It's kind of silly, maybe, because I'm doing this so that I can try to hit... Uh, I'm doing this so I can try to hit a big bloodlust. Actually... So here's the thing about this boss, right? He's going to inflict exert on me next turn. I don't necessarily have to care. If I leave it to be just me and the me and Joey Bones here, he has two sides where if he rolls them, I can just ignore my entire turn pretty much. Uh, and if he rolls the descend, or not the descend, but another cleave, it can be bad. But if he rolls the big bite, yeah, okay. I do have to play a little bit here. Good. Hmm. Wish I could gain max HP right now. We want to maximum, or we want to minimize how many times we have to exert here. But poet should exert, and actually poet and veteran should exert because they're gonna pass next turn anyway because they're gonna be exerted. So that actually makes sense. Dabalist should not exert, and then Weaver should wake the fuck up. Uh, do I settle for three? I think I don't. Okay, fine. I was just gonna look for the charge side, but it doesn't happen. So we hit a six on inevitable, break one of those. We go heal, shield, four, mana gain, three mana. This boss really farms you, by the way, if your game plan is to make big mana. He really fucks you up. Because you can't... Like, unless you have, like, a Warlock spell. Right? Warlock crushes him. Can I get you... No, I can't get a rescue off. Thinking we take Fate up to full. And we just want to save ourselves for next turn. Like, we want to be bursting and saving for the future. Yeah, because this fight's going to take a long time. My team is actually pretty bad at fighting him. No cleanse is the real killer. 
but no way to break a bunch of intangibles is what's going to be trouble here. Uh, I would like to not lose Dabalist, ideally. Three mana. We might be able to save her. Come on, fate. What are we doing? Man. First, first. I don't even get to spell rescue. Hang on, I bet I can, actually. You go burst, burst, spell rescue, burst, burst. Or, I guess this burst is fine. There you go. That'll do. I think it's actually important to crush here and break this intangible. Every time you break intangible, you're stepping yourself forward in the tempo by one. Please bite me, holy shit. He is not rolling it. That list is dead here. I think there's no counterplay. Uh, I really, unless I rolled a six heal shield, but fate hasn't been hitting that lately. Uh, this might be good. You dodge. Four plus two? No. Okay. Nothing to do here then. Well, what I can do here actually is I can grab a free max HP for poet. But yeah, this fight is also a lot easier when he bites you and just basically takes a turn to let you do something. But dodging is pretty good here too. Good god, he is crushing me. Uh, you gotta roll a dodge. And I think, what, four and five, it's the same. You gotta roll a dodge, Weaver. Good job. At least, we, at least one of us is showing up to do their job of surviving inevitable hits. Uh... The big thing for this fight, by the way, is if you can hit sixes, you can break two intangibles at once. But we can go the long way here. Now I don't want him to bite me, though. This is a big cleave. You're definitely dodging. Uh, I'm... Fine. Yeah, I win now. 100% I've won this fight. From this spot, I think it's guaranteed. Because he's not actually stopping my next turn, he's stopping the turn after. And I can go, like, Spell Rescue, Big Self Shield... Most importantly, break the last intangible. And we have won. Yeah, the, well, I guess we haven't won until I put the nail in the coffin here. The, pro the lesson to learn with this fight, much like Hexia, if you're struggling versus him, you just kill the adds. You kill the wisps off, and then once it's just you and him, his damage output is pretty low, right? Uh, let's, let's do a little compare and contrast here. Uh, monster. Inevitable. He's hitting, like, what was that? That was, like, turn 8 or 9, maybe? Uh, it was turn, it was turn 7, because he was hitting a 10 exert. This is 30 damage on turn 7. Just for comparison, Hand can hit you for 30 damage on turn 1, or, uh, fucking 4 damage poison cleave, and... I don't know. Hexia, Hexia is similar. She does no damage. That's like the whole point of Hexia. But Dragon is hitting, I guess, 25, right? The bosses that are pushing the envelope and making you go fast are hitting the damage that he's hitting on turn 7 on turn 1. So you have a lot of time before you're actually under real threat. All he really does is stall you out and be annoying. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave me a like. Subscribe if you want to see more. I will see you in the next one. Have a good one.